Okay, so calling all pharmacists who want to be prescribers. Yeah. So um, all of the pharmacists that will be newly qualifying in 2026, in the summer August, everyone will become prescribers. This is because the MFAM course has changed. They have uh, now included a prescribing module. And so when the pre regs become pharmacists, they will be prescribers straight away. But for those like me who've graduated, I'm qualified, but I'm not a prescriber, I am trying to skill up. And so I'm enrolled on a uh, course run by Higher Education Wales. Um, and yes, there has been new guidance that was updated in January 2024 for both independent and supplementary prescribers. This video has cherry picked information relevant to pharmacists and so if you're a nurse or optometrist or a prescribing radiographer you can look in the PDF file that I've linked in the description. It has all the extensive guidance and requirements of good practice and things like that so you can have a look at it just to warn you it's quite a lengthy document so if you do if you do control f you can find and type in the relevant search words for your field so let's get started independent prescribers are solely responsible for the for the items you prescribe for assessing patients with diagnosed or undiagnosed conditions for the decisions about the clinical management required including prescribing. Pharmacists who are independent prescribers can prescribe in any condition within their competency including licensed and unlicensed medication. Unlicensed medication is when a medicine or a drug has no marketing authorization in the UK that has a defining clinical condition in which the medicine will be used. Pharmacist independent prescribers can prescribe and administer schedule two, three, four, five control drugs, including dimorphine hydrochloride, dipipanone, cocaine for treating organic disease and not addiction. All prescribers, this includes both independent and supplementary need to work in the level of competence and always ask for advice or referral if that is outside your your competency or your scope. This is because we are all accountable for our actions and the decisions and so if a decision is not for the best of the patient and you didn't count you don't get counselling or advice from a more experienced person then the accountability is on you. So make sure you know what you're prescribing and if not, then try not to or seek expert advice beforehand. Independent prescribers can also prescribe off-label use medication. Remember, unlicensed and off-label are different. Off-label is when a, a company has a drug that has valid marketing authorization in the UK and Europe but the medicine is used outside of the marketing authorization. For example if a medicine is licensed for adults and they didn't do any research on children however in hospitals off-label use medication is quite common this is because consultants have extensive experience in using that particular medicine in a different population for example children. They have enough data that can confirm its clinical effectiveness and good patient outcomes with the usage. When it comes to prescribing appliances and devices and borderline substances which can include powdered milks for those babies who cannot um, tolerate dairy or breast milk. Um, in the community, if you're prescribing in the community, you need to endorse the item as ACBS according to the drug tariff. In hospitals, this does not apply but you need to look into the hospital specific formulary and the budget that you have. Education and training. So to become an independent prescriber pharmacist, you need to undertake training that is accredited by the General Pharmaceutical Council, which is a professional body, and undertake that training and supervision. You need supervision from a prescriber, obviously. It used to be that only doctors were able to um, supervise uh, want to be prescribers however now 
things have changed and so pharmacists who have been practicing as a prescriber for two years or more can have students and they can supervise. You need to be supervised by a DPP, which is a designated prescribing practitioner. Can be a doctor, a nurse, pharmacist. You would try and get someone to supervise you in the area of specialty that you want to go into, obviously. So legal and professional, so legal and professional liability. Because as a prescriber, you have a higher responsibility, you are encouraged to get professional indemnity insurance. This should be discussed with your employer or if you're a locum, you can always get insurance privately as well. DBS checks. I would recommend enhanced DBS checks because you'll probably come across um, children uh, in practice and so doing the enhanced DBS checks enables you to also approach the vulnerable adults and the elderly, including children as well. Prescription stationery. This is quite an interesting one because as a prescriber, particularly in the community, you need to have a particular prescribing pad. So it's the green forms, which is WP10. So it must have NHS Wales unique prescriber number, your practice code and the practice address, telephone number and the name of the health board that you are working in. If you work in a GP as a prescribing pharmacist, then you'll need to order the single sheet form rather than the pad because you will be printing out the prescriptions rather than handwriting them. Prescription stationery, i.e. the pad or the white, oh, the white, the green form needs to be in a lockable place because if someone steals it and they sign the prescription under your name, then you are liable for that prescription and so it's a controllable stationery you need to keep it locked and kept safe just like a control drug you can only order a prescription pad if you have six weeks or less left so fyi dispensing pharmacist so you write a script and then the patient goes to a pharmacy to get it dispensed the, 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 the dispensing pharmacist is not required to check whether if you're prescribing within your scope or if that particular drug is in your formulary because each prescriber has their own individual scope it's nearly impossible to track everyone uh, or phone up to see if this is right so you so if you're prescribing you must be 100% sure that you know what you're prescribing obviously so yeah that was a quick roundup of the relevant information that pharmacy prescribers pharmacist prescribers need to know if you have any other questions or if I said something that wasn't quite correct, please let me know and I will look into it and correct it as need be. Anyway, thank you for tuning in and have a great day. Until the next video.